Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Savannah if you're new here and I do videos on Tuesdays and Fridays. If you like the content, I hope you subscribe and do all of the YouTube things. Um, and yeah, today's video is gonna be like a get ready with me that I'm kind of talking about brands I'm excited to see things from in 2024. And then I also want to discuss my declutter, which was only an eyeshadow palette declutter because I eyeshadow palettes are the things I own the most of. I don't own like that much variety in terms of foundation or anything like that, which you can see all of that stuff in the video I posted a couple weeks later that's just like the My Makeup Collection, which I will say the Kaleidos Lip Clays I did not have when I filmed that video, so I do have those now. And also, um, the Ensley Rain Lands of Enchantment palette, which I'm going to be using today, I did not have in the eyeshadow palette declutter or the makeup collection video. Um, but I think I did mention in that one, oh, I don't know, I don't think I had the Harvest Moon at that point either, but I had mentioned that I would be getting that one, but I'm not totally sure. Anyway, so in that video, I decluttered... How many things? I wrote it down over here because I wasn't, I couldn't remember. Seven eyeshadow palettes. So I decluttered the a Pat McGrath quad that I had, can't remember which one. I decluttered the ABH Nouveau, an Auric single shadow from them, the cranberry one, the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz palette, the Lunar Beauty Nude Prism and Greek Goddess palette. And then I also got rid of the Unearthly Cosmetics and the Dark palette, specifically because I'm allergic to the purple pink formula apparently I found out when I bought that palette so um hmm, I think I've used like every matte in this now it's just shimmers that I haven't used so I think I'm gonna go in with majestic this like mid-tone purple to start and kind of just put that everywhere and go from there um so anyways so I decluttered those and I've been thinking since I did that declutter I have two palettes in my collection that I do really like and I think they're really fun and beautiful but I kind of realized that uh, I don't ever really reach for them um, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more yeah I just don't really reach for them um, my book videos that I do my book commentary that really helps me to reach for and use like all of my eyeshadow palettes because I'm kind of just doing my makeup while discussing things and it just tends to make it easier to grab you know things and kind of rotate between your makeup and what you're using I have like a spot there that's not filling in that is my skin that is not the eyeshadow because I've used this shade already and didn't have this problem so I apparently I must have a dry spot on my eye right there we might have to put shimmer like all the way out there to cover that up. Um, anyways, and so I kind of just noticed after that video these last few weeks that there are two palettes that I do really love and I think they're, you know, really fun and beautiful, but I'm not using them, so I think I'm going to declutter them. So this is kind of an update to my declutter, like I'm adding two more palettes to it and... <laughs> Then I will talk about brands I'm excited to see things from in 2024. So the first palette I am decluttering uh, here that I'm adding to my declutter video that was a few weeks ago is both of these palettes are from Glaminatrix Cosmetics. So if you watch that video, you know which two I have because I only own the two. Um, but the first one that I'm talking about that I am decluttering is the Glaminatrix Cosmetics Nocturnal Palette. Looks like this. It's really cool. It's fun. You can probably hear my daughter screaming in the background. She's very tired. She's with her dad. <laughs> Have some like cool, you know, like grungy tones with these periwinkle, bluey shades, all that kind of stuff. This palette is really fun. It's really beautiful. It's like a unique color story, yada, yada, yada. But I just find I don't reach for it. And when I have used it I feel like I kind of create the same two or three looks because 
it is like a fun unique like grungy weird color story but because of the colors i just find that you can kind of only do so many of the combinations because some of the colors like they don't go together and they get muddy so like you can't put certain things together um and so i think i'm going to deepen that up with atlantis down here slightly deeper more like blue bluey purple um and so i just find that like i don't know i don't really reach for it and i have other brands that i have like some of those grungy gross like tones in as well as you know like those pops of blue or whatever like even in this palette i kind of have that um yeah i must have a dry patch on my eye because uh this is like patchy out here but i've used this this is my third or fourth time already using this and it has not done this yet so it's definitely my eyeball just bear in mind here bear that in mind um anyway so i just find that i don't reach for it and when i do it's kind of the same things over and over and i will say i had seen from quite a few people that this nocturnal palette from glam matrix which I don't believe it's available anymore as a palette, but you can get them in singles, I think. Um, but I had heard that like they didn't feel like it was the same formula that Glaminatrix typically has. And I will say like the second palette I have from them, the formula is a lot better. The mattes perform like a lot better. Um, and so just because of like the way the mattes perform and then just the color story itself kind of making it so the looks end up being repetitive at least for me um in my skill level that i have i think i'm just going to declutter it the special shades are really beautiful and stuff but between like my ensley rain palettes my terra moon cosmetic singles i think and even some of like my lethal cosmetic shades i think i can kind of like dupe them you know what i mean um and yeah i just i'm not reaching for it so i think i'm going to declutter it and give it to a friend that would use it a lot more than i have been and just kind of call it a day with it and i had a lot of fun with it i don't regret purchasing it but i didn't see that people thought that about the formula until after i had purchased it so i do wish i had seen that that like people that regularly use that brand thought that that palette didn't necessarily measure up to the quality that they have of other items from them but you know i still don't regret the purchase i think it was still it's still like a really fun cool palette and if you like the color story like i said i think they do still sell it as like single shadows and um I also think the colors, you know, with how many makeup brands there are today, they're pretty dupable. Like, you can find things. And then the other one that I'm getting rid of from Glaminatrix is the Nearly Natural palette, which they discontinued this. It wasn't even out that long, I feel like. Like, maybe a year, and they discontinued it. This is really beautiful. Like, I did say from the get-go, though, that when I purchased it, that these two brown shades and the corners here way too similar like even on my super pale skin there's like hardly any differentiation between the two then you have these like basic kind of like the mauvey purple tones that are in a lot of neutral palettes this one like olive green and these like two cool tone browns and then you have these like green shimmers some of these other really pretty shimmers it's a beautiful palette like honestly looking at it i'm kind of like should i should i change my mind and just keep it but I'm not reaching for it. And I think it's because like the pinky shades in here, I don't use that often. Like I don't use pink shades a lot. Um, I will use them, you know, here and there or whatever, but it's not like my go-to shadow, especially for mattes. Pink shimmers I use more than pink mattes. I'm gonna use this like pastel purple and just hit the edges of this to add another level of purple. Um, and so like the pinky match you know they're in there i don't use them that much and then um and, like i do use them i'm not saying i don't but like they're not my most commonly used shades and then 
like that olive green I can dupe in my Lethal Cosmetics single shadows that I have, which I pull those palettes out way more frequently. The shimmers are beautiful, but I probably could easily find like dupes throughout my collection for like all of those shimmers probably between my Nomad and my Lethal. Just those alone, I think I could probably dupe this like, I don't know. The only one I might not be able to fully dupe is Exposed, which is a lighter like olive gold shimmer. I think that's like the only one. These other like champagne rosy gold shades, I could dupe those easily. Like that peachy, that blue. That green is the only one that might like not have a perfect or exact dupe in my collection. But I think it's a beautiful palette and I do really love it. I still stand by like what I said, like it's a really good like neutral palette and it's a really good neutral palette for people that like color and don't want like a basic neutral palette I feel like um, because it was, it is different. I'm going to say was because I don't think it's available anymore. Um, but I just like, I'm just not reaching for it and I can give it to someone that I know that would really appreciate it and cherish it more than I am because I'm not using it. Um, I have a friend, she's like just started getting into makeup. This would be like the perfect palette to give her to experiment and play with because it's neutrals, it's a good formula, a little bit more forgiving, you know, when you're trying to do a look and things like that because it is neutral. Where is that one brush? new for the heck oh here it is uh, i'm gonna deepen it up just a little bit more in the outer corner i think and i'm going to we'll just keep it all purple why aren't i'm actually going to use the dark blue down here because i might use a little bit of like the bluey shimmer so i kind of want a little bit of difference here um and so because of that i'm going to oh, uh, didn't mean to add that much straight away. Let's buff that out. Thankfully, this formula is very forgiving. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, anyway, so because of that, I'm going to get rid of that one too. So, uh, just a little update to my eyeshadow palette declutter that I did back in October. I've sat on them for a little bit, haven't used them since that palette declutter, and it just is kind of thinking about it, especially watching everybody's doing their palette declutter or their just collection declutters now in general because it's the end of the year. I did mine a little bit earlier than people usually do it, but, um, you know, I just kind of been watching those and thinking about things and I was like, you know what, I'm not using those. I know someone else that would use them more than me. This eye, there's something going on with this eye today because I've literally used every single one of these mattes already and did not have this problem before. And I'm not having that problem on this side. It's only this side. Something is going on. I'm going to have to apply shimmer like all over the lid to cover, cover this up. Like something is happening here. Um, but anyways, so... Yeah, I'm gonna add those to my declutter. And I just kinda wanted to update you guys. I didn't want to just do it without noting it, just so that way I kind of had it shown somewhere that I actually did get rid of more. So instead of decluttering seven, I decluttered nine. And I don't know how many that leaves me with, I don't have more than 30 palettes, so I'm pretty sure that leaves me with somewhere between like 22 or something like that. I'm not sure, I'd have to count, but anyways. Yeah, and then the rest of the video, I kind of wanted to just talk about brands that I'm excited to see kind of what they come out with in 2024. Um, this is just based off of like some of the brands I follow on Instagram and you know, things that they released this year that I thought were really cool and exciting. So I can't wait to see what they release next year. Even if it was stuff that like, even though I didn't, even if I didn't buy things from the brand this year or whatever, still sometimes like 
the releases are still really interesting and cool and I like really appreciate them and stuff I just don't buy a lot of makeup because I try to keep my collection smaller and doing looks and things with palettes that a lot of us purchase which I know that kind of stuff isn't usually like super popular or whatever in terms of views and things like that because people want to see like all the new but I like watching people use makeup that you know we've all had for a while that's existed and like seeing them still give love to products and things like that so but anyways um so one of the brands I'll talk about first is the one I'm using right now Ensley Rain Cosmetics I don't know if they just started releasing products this year or if they started in 2022 or something but they are a newer brand um they only have a handful of palettes and products and stuff and i own two of them i own this one the lands of enchantment and i own the um harvest moon palette uh they also this year released the twisted like tea party or something palette like the alice in wonderland one and they released the um flower moon palette i think it was called the summery release um and yeah they've released a few things i think everything they've released so far is really cool and beautiful i did note um in my like first impressions video for this that like i do wish that they would stick to one pan shape and size like this one circles the harvest moon was squares flower moon was squares the tea party one was circles like i wish they would just stick with one and kind of you know call it a day um just i think it would be easier and i wish that they were all magnetic i don't mind paying for that because then you could change you know and mix and match and like create your own kind of situation um i don't know what i want to play with for shimmer because there's a few that i wanted to play with like, I really want to play with Shattered Stars. It's like that brown base that has that light blue reflect. But I also really want to play with True Essence, that, like, denim -y shade. I just don't know if there's different enough to, like, put on the lid. Oh, okay. I'm going to have to edit that out because that was a crazy amount of unfocusing. Um, I'm going to do True Essence, I think. I wanted to use Moonrise, too, though. I haven't used that one, either like that greeny pink shifty one i haven't used the pink shimmers in this yet either <laughs> well except for Faye, i did use fey uh, let's just do true essence for now and kind of go from there um anyways so i'm really excited to see what this brand does in 2024 i think um, everything that they released this year so far has been just so cool and beautiful and like unique and I really like their color stories and their packaging and um, like everything is just so beautiful and I just really can't wait to see what they do in 2024 their stuff is expensive but I understand why you know like the packaging is expensive especially when they're doing the magnetic palettes and then you know so the packaging is expensive and then also like these formulas are really expensive to make these like holochrome duo multi-chromes like super sparkly like that's just really expensive to do um and so i understand this shade is there's the same formula in the harvest moon palette but usually these like thicker chunkier shades once you apply them on the eye they kind of smooth out but this is actually like has a few pieces that are staying kind of chunky i don't know why oh still really beautiful but it's like kind of weird there's a few like just straight up chunks um i don't quite understand what's going on but anyways i'm super excited to see what they come out with in 2024 i really like their brand I think everything is so beautiful and I know that they kind of 
mentioned that 2024, um, 2023, some of the, uh, releases got messed up oh my camera's gonna flip hold on some of the releases got messed up and that's why they had this fall like so many releases back to back to back it wasn't supposed to be like that and so i know that they said like next year should be better and also now that they kind of are a little bit more established they should be able to have more um stock so things aren't selling out so you're not like getting doing like pre-orders all the time and things like that so I think that would be really nice this side smoothed out better I wonder if this side is just like that first layer or a couple of the flakes just don't want to smooth out um they don't look bad or anything it's just like if I look at it just right I can kind of like tell that it's a flake but I think it's honestly just be like this first layer of this shadow because this side is smooth and not like that at all so there's just a couple like flakies on this side but that is so beautiful it's definitely like a denim blue silver but it has the holo sparkles in it it's so pretty uh, anyways i'm so excited to see what they do in 2024 i really like the brand i've messaged them a few times and talked to them just a smidge like congratulating them on products telling them how much i'm enjoying the products and things like that so i would love to build a relationship with them because i really do love their products and i think everything is so beautiful and i would just love to have a relationship with a brand um I'm trying to think if i like the dark purple up there is really pretty but this eye having that like dry patch it looks really bad i almost just feel like i need a shimmer out there to just cover things up but I don't know which one to do to do that <sighs> um anyway so yeah this this brand I would love to see what they come out with in 2024 I'm super excited I think they're gonna come out with some really cool stuff and everything and like I said I hope to like establish a relationship with the brand because I really like their products and everything I've tried and oh that was pretty that's a good that's a good decision um I love everything I've tried and I would just love to have like a relationship with the brand and everything and um let's see another brand Nomad I love to see what Nomad comes out with every year I think they're such a fun like unique brand you know it's all based off of travel like where they're traveling and then they kind of get inspiration from where they're going and that was such a, so I took Shattered Stars the one I was kind of wanting to use that's like the brown base with the bluey reflect and like look at it out in the outer corner on top of that purple it's like a turquoise blue oh, such a good decision stunning um anyways I'm excited to see what Nomad does next year I always love like seeing Nomad's releases seeing what they come out with I bought the Ghost Town USA palette this last year. I absolutely love it. Well, this year. It was this year. This video is coming out in 2023. Um, so their fall release this year was that palette. And I, I love it. I take it with me like when we go to see family. Because we don't live by family. So we, you know, go visit them every once in a while. And... I've taken that with me and it's such a good palette to take with you just because it has those neutrals and then it has like the fun like grungy cool tone colors that are still kind of neutral so they're like you can pull off as a neutral and all the shimmers in there are beautiful like that palette was so good um, and I love the shimmer formula in that palette I hope that that's the shimmer formula they use for the rest of them because it is really good really good um so yeah i'm excited to see where they travel to next to where that's where the palettes are going to be and like what color stories and i kind of like that they go between like is it the 15 pants and then they kind of have like the 12. i kind of like that they kind of vary in size but the consistency is pretty much always the same you know it's just these few things but I'm excited to see what they do and kind of come out with and they came out with that little bit of like skincare and stuff at the end of this year which was new and interesting so I'm excited to see what they come out with next year 
Um, I think it will be a lot of fun. Let's see, who else? Blend Bunny, I'm excited to see what they do next year. I think I saw, cause she does the, um, she'll do like Instagram stories and like answering questions and stuff. And I think I saw in one of those that she did at one point that 2024 is going to be the year of like, they're gonna have some collabs with Blend Bunny, which I think it's gonna be super cool. I don't know who they're gonna collab with. Like, I don't know if it'll be with anyone that I know of and follow, if it'll be like people I don't know, but people that are associated with the brand a lot, like other influencers I don't know, you know, like who they are, but I think it'll be a lot of fun. I'm excited to see. I hope Blend Bunny comes out with some more like smaller curated palette like the all done up palette because I have that one and I love it and I just think it's fun to see them kind of doing some palettes that are a little bit smaller not these massive ones and also to see them come out with some color stories that aren't rainbow you know they don't have a red a pink a purple a green blue yellow like they have just a different color story they have a few palettes that aren't necessarily like rainbow the all done up the dollhouse lure I would even say is not really a rainbow um they had the the sickly sweet and I think there's one other one I can't remember but those ones aren't necessarily rainbow but um a lot of the other ones are so I would love to just see blend bunny kind of expand and doing some color stories that aren't rainbow and that are just different and also then just doing some different things in terms of how big the palettes are seeing them do a few more like curated smaller color stories and things and i'm excited to see what they do next year um and just kind of seeing the brand continue to grow because i mean the eyeshadows are amazing and i know a lot of people like some of the other products that have been like discontinued like people really liked the lip products and we're hoping she'd bring them back but she discontinued them like right away because the manufacturer or something messed them up from the get-go um in terms of like the packaging and then they just never brought them back so i'd love to see her to like continue to expand into other products and be able to keep those products like on as a regular thing and not having to discontinue them so we'll kind of see but i think i think that brand will be super fun to like see what they do next year um yeah i'm excited to see i think it'll be a lot of fun and like every brand i'm mentioning is a smaller indie brand because honestly that's what i look forward to seeing some of these other brands like i like their base products like i love my nars foundation love my charlotte tilbury like powder things like that but i don't really go to them for like eyeshadow palettes or anything like that because they're just not they're just it's good to have a basic palette in your collection but once you have one it's like do you really need more <laughs> no like it's fun to have these innovative products from other brands um so i'm excited to see what they do next year too and yeah, I don't know. I just think all these brands are going to be so fun to watch and see them grow and just kind of seeing how things go for them. Another brand is Lethal Cosmetics. So I don't own like any of Lethal's blushes or highlighters or liners or lip stuff or any of their pre-made palettes, but I own a lot of my own build your own palettes and I love them. I use my Lethal stuff all of the time if you're curious about what i have from them i have a dedicated lethal playlist that shows all of my build your own palettes and it shows swatches and everything um so if you are curious about what i do have from them i do have that playlist up i think i have like nine or so palettes from them that i've built and I love all of them. I love the shadows. The mattes are so beautiful. So I'm always excited to see like what Lethal comes out with, what new shades. And I have so many that I don't make a ton of build your own palettes, but like I'm kind of to the point now where like once a year I'll kind of build one that's some unique shades, a unique color story with some of their new shades that they've added and get that. So that's what I did this year. Um, 
and I love that palette. It's a lot bigger. Normally I only do the 12 pan or the 9 pans, but this time I had so many shades that I did a bigger pan color story, and it was on a really good sale when I ordered it, but um, yeah, I'm excited to see like what they come out with in this next year and like new colors and formulas and things that they do because I just love their stuff. I think I think they're so fun and I don't know. I just love Lethal. I love it. I know I don't do any of their, like like I said, their pre-made palettes or whatever. The one that they did just release is really beautiful. I don't know what it's called. It has like a butterfly or a dragonfly or something on the front. I just know there's some type of like bug situation on the front. But that is really beautiful. But I just, I never do their pre-made. I just always am building my own. <laughs> I think it's more fun like it's just so much fun to have a brand that really has like its main thing is a dedicated like building your own custom situation I just I love it I think it's so different and they're based out of Germany I've never had issues here in the States like receiving the product anything being broken anything like that like it's always been shipped really well and been super easy process and it really doesn't take that long to get it either. Like sometimes I get stuff from them faster than I get it from brands that are within the U.S. So there is that. But yeah, I'm just excited to see what Lethal does because I love Lethal. Um, let's see. I'm going to use... So I used Light Language for a highlighter the other day, which is that like bluey purple and it looked really cool. But I just want to use something else. So I think I'm going to use Divine Light, which is the greeny shade. I'm going to kind of use that as my highlight today. I don't go crazy with the highlighter, so it's not like it's going to probably be super obvious or anything. But these, um, these are really cool as highlights. These couple of like white based shades that have these shifts. They're really fun. Yeah. Super fun. Um, anyway, so that was Lethal, Blend Bunny, Nomad, Ensley Rain. I'm excited to see if Ensley Rain like comes out with anything different. They're, you know, they've done the eyeshadow palettes and stuff, which I love the eyeshadow palettes if that's all they do. Like, that's fine with me. I know they've done a few like loose shadows, I think. And I think some like lip glosses and stuff, but I think that's about it for their products that they've done. And they do like magnetic palettes that they sell individually and stuff too, which that's always fun and they're super cute or whatever. But yeah, I'm just kind of excited to see different stuff from these brands and what they create this next year and what they do and how they continue to grow and things like that. It's just a lot of fun. I don't know. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Hmm, is there anybody else? I wrote down a few brands just to kind of see. Let me see. Who did I write down? I think I talked about everybody I wrote down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm also excited to see if Auric comes out with anything new. That's Samantha Ravindahl's brand. And I honestly really love that brand. I love their Glow Lust. It's in my everyday makeup. Um, it's so beautiful. I love this stuff. It's such a good like, you're just glowing naturally product because there's no glitter or anything in it. It's just a natural looking super glowy product and I love it. It's so amazing. Um, but this year, they didn't come out with much this year. I don't know if they even came out with a new product this year. They did those, like, the plush, like, lip mask things. Um, but I don't know if that was this year or last year. No new shades of their, like, single shadows. They had the lashes, the, sun, the glow lust. They came out with, like, a new like travel size of the glow lust that wasn't available before but that's it like no new actual products i don't think this year so i'm excited to see next year if they like come out with anything new because i do really love the brand i think it's really nice for like everyday makeup use um people that like having like really um crap what's the term 
can't think of the term I'm trying to use. Like their go-to products, people that have like certain products that are just their go-to that they use every single day. Holy Grail, that's the word I was gonna use. Like their Holy Grail products. I think that's kind of what the brand kind of does and is for people. Um, I think it's really beautiful. I think it's really nice for people too that like, I don't know. Like they're not doing like crazy, you know, any like crazy intense eyeshadow or super, you know, whatever. It's like quick, simple, easy, but still really beautiful and like impactful type situations. Like their single shadows are really nice for quick easy stuff and like I think they're really nice and they're the colors are really good for people whose workplaces have like dress codes and makeup codes and things like that which a lot of places do I know when I was working out of the home my workplace had dress and makeup codes and like hair codes and stuff um, oh I'll have to get that off um so I just think the items are nice for things like that. Um, so I'm excited to see what they come out with next year. They kind of have their like basics and holy grails with the few products they do have out. So I don't know, I don't know if that's the line they're gonna continue down or if they are gonna try to branch out and also have some different types of products. I really don't know. But I think it'll be kind of fun to see. I don't hear a lot of people talking about them. But then again, like this year, like I said, I don't think they actually came out with anything new this year. Um, like a new, new product that they didn't have before. So, I don't know. I'm excited to see if they come out with anything else. But, yeah. Kind of see. Okay. Oh. No. My makeup hates me today. This eye is just giving me all kinds of trouble today. Seriously. I don't know what's going on. Okay. I think what I'm going to do. So I know the two pink mattes in here are too light for me to put on the lower lash line. Like I can try and build a build a build. And they honestly just look too light. I might put a little bit of nodal shift down and then I think I'm going to use one of the pink shimmers on the lower lash or something just because I really want to use one and I haven't gotten to use one at all yet so this will at least allow me to like get a little bit of use out of one even though it's not going to be like a main focus situation. I am excited to use one like on the actual lid that is you know, what I'm using as a main shade, but just haven't had the chance yet. They're just, they're, these pinks in here, the two pinks that are in here are super pastel. On the lid, I'm like in the crease and stuff, I can build them up enough to not look quite so pale. But for some reason on the lower lash, they just look white down there. Like I can't get them to look any more intense or like any deeper at all. Not quite sure why. Cause on the lid and like in the crease and stuff, I used them and I was able to get them to like look pink and more intense but on the lower lash on me they like that literally looks white like straight up white <laughs> I don't know okay this is gonna flip one more time <laughs> okay so for a shimmer on the lower lash So Earth Light, I think will be hard to put on the lower lash line because that's the holo shade there in the middle. And so it's got a little bit of like a chunkier texture. 
This shade is a little too dark to put on the lower lash for me. That's Cosmic Flow. It's really beautiful. I think it'll be too light. This one is Moonrise. It's like a champagne with a green and pink flip to it. That's what they look like actually swatched out. So this is um, Cosmic Flow, Earthlight, and Moonrise. I don't know if I'm, with Moonrise if you can tell, but it's like a champagne and it has a greeny pink like flip to it. I don't know if it's really coming through though. In person I can see the green flip, in the mirror I can see the pink. That's basically how it's going. But, um, I don't know. I really like all of those. Maybe. I think I'm going to use Earthlight, though. That one that I think will be kind of hard to use down there. But I'm going to try anyways. Because it's just so pretty. Um, I'm going to put that on the lower lash. Just like in the front area here. Ooh, I know what I might do. I'm gonna use this in the front because this is a lighter pink and then it has that, the holo reflect, but when you apply it like this, you don't really get the holo because it's kind of like all brushing away or whatever. I'm gonna put that about halfway. Just slowly doing it. I'm getting glitter all over my face even with slowly doing it, it's just, how it's gonna go because this is again like a chunkier formula i feel like when you say chunky people like have a negative thought about it it's not bad it's just the way that this formula is but it applies really smooth when you put it on it just kind of like picks up chunky okay i'm gonna attempt to brush this glitter off but i know for a fact it's gonna stay there Helped a little bit, but it's pretty much still just all over my face. That's fine. Then I'm going to take the deeper shade that I didn't want to have in, in the front there, Cosmic Flow, and I'm going to put that in the outer portion because this pink matte is so um, light that it honestly just looks kind of like white on me, which does not look good on the lower, on the lower lash line. Ooh. Good decision, Savannah. Good decision. That looks super cute. Okay. Just lightly kind of put it on there. That look about the same. I think so. Ooh, that's really cute. And then inner corner, I think I'm gonna use Moonrise, the one that I didn't end up using because it's that champagne and then it has the pinky green goldy kind of reflect. I think that'd be really cute in the inner corner. Yeah, like you get that champagne but next to the pink, you are getting the pink, but then you kind of do get a little bit of the green. Not much. Probably get more of the green shift in this if it was next to a green shimmer or matte. Ooh, that's cute. Okay, this is the finished look. I think it looks really pretty. The mattes um, on this eye were not working with me today, but that was it's not the matte formula. It's my eyeball because... I've used these mattes already and never had that issue and I also didn't have that issue on this side so my eye must just have like a dry patch over here. Uh, not totally sure what that's about. But anyways, this is the finished look. Let's zoom in and look at the eye look. That's the fun thing. So on the lower lash you can see, what's it called? 
Earthlight and then Cosmic Flow is out here. So Earthlight has the holo, but I don't know how much of the holo you're getting. Um, and then Cosmic Flow out there. And then on the lid, the mattes were Majestic, Atlantis, and Edge of Night, and a little bit of Enlightened. And then True Essence and Shattered Stars. So True Essence is that lighter denim blue, and it does have a holo in it. And then Shattered Stars is out here, which has a brown base and a like light blue reflect. But on top of that purple, it's pulling like a tealy blue, and it's really pretty. So yeah, this is the look. I think it came out really cute and pretty. I like the blues with like the purples. I think it just looks really fun. So this is the look. I'd love to know like you know, what you think about my two new declutters that I'm doing. Also, what brand you're excited to see things from in 2024. And if you have this, uh, what's it called? I always forget the name of this palette. The Lands of Enchantment palette. I would love to know if you have it, what you think, because I've been playing with it a lot and I love every single look that I've done. I think it's so amazing. And yeah, that's everything. I hope you have a great rest of your week and I'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye.